I am so stinking excited. We are here at the port of Fort Lauderdale for the very first 2KK getaway cruise. Joe, we're getting on the boat. I'm so excited. Are you ready? I am so ready. This is the happiest walk when you know that like you're checked in and you don't have to worry anymore that you're in the right place. I'm, I'm just excited. Like, I don't even care about the curtains. I just care about hanging out with everybody in the Two Crazy Kiddos family. Me too. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we're cruising with our friends, you'll be alerted to it. You're just super excited. I am so excited. We just got here and onboard and into our room, the Liberty of the Seas. Yep. We are on our inaugural 2KK friendship cruise getaway cruise it's called the 2kk getaway and i'm so excited uh we're hoping to meet up at, as a group 52 people yes going on this cruise together we're going to be cruising from today's monday all the way to friday morning yeah so really excited for the friendship that's going to take place on board this ship yeah we already got we've got our name badge holders Yay. that we had made we're going to go meet everybody. We've reserved a room, just a meeting room. There's no speakers. This is not a conference. This is about community. Right. The, all of our 2KK getaway cruises and, and any kind of meetups Hang and trips, out. they're just about community. They're about connecting with people, hanging out. And that's why I'm really excited about this first one because Me too. this is just about connections right because and we got the room downstairs because how do you know who's even in your community unless you can put eyes on them so yeah. i mean i would love to think that everybody will make friends on this ship whether they're with the two crazy ketos family or not we would love that we actually met a friend made a new friend last night that just happened to be rachel just randomly hugged somebody. i just randomly hugged somebody that was also going on this cruise just isn't a part of our group but now i have a new friend and she actually said, do you mind if, like, I came over to the Barbados room? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. The more the merrier. So we're really excited about what's going to get unlocked yep. on this ship. Just friendship and just lots of opportunities to hang out. And because there's so many activities and entertainment going on on this ship, whatever it is that you want to do, grab a cup of coffee, see a, a comedy show together, or just hang out on your own and just Watch eat dinner with us. Yeah, exactly. There's so much stuff to do that I'm thinking that there's something for everybody. Yeah. So uh, we're in an ocean view balcony. Most people got an ocean view balcony. Uh, we're in an ocean view balcony. So do you want to show them? Yeah. Our cabin? Let's take a look. Dun, 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 dun. It's better with the light off. Is it? Oh. Yeah, because it's like the, the it's not like a white light, so it turns oh, you it orange. Turns orange. So you look beautiful in natural light. Uh, well, That's where you look really good. Thank you very much. I'm gonna say this cabin nice. is actually bigger than our cabin that we had on Allure of the Seas. Right. And Allure of the Seas is an Oasis class ship, and this is a Freedom class, a much smaller ship. It is, but everything's about layout, right? So real estate. Um for when we were on the low carb cruise, our bed was right here. And then all you had was this space for your closet. Right. So because our bed is actually behind Joe right now, the closet is up front and is much more. That's bigger than the closet we had on the Allure of the Seas. And possibly bigger than our closet at home. So it really is. A it's not as treat. big as the one we had on, on Freedom. Mm -hmm. But I promised you that when we ever get like bumped up or you upgrade, like I'm not somebody that's like, well, now that I've tasted the champagne i can't go back to diet root beer i could go back to diet root beer all day long so i'm really excited about this um i don't think that now I you're can, orange i well i don't think i can show it without turning the light on though so this is the way that the showers are i find that they're pretty you know nice and tall and in our in the last ship we had a tub which was cool 
but this is the um, shower and it's it's great works fantastic prime poop in position toilet and this is the sink so it's funny yeah even the bathroom feels bigger because of the room configuration so when we were on low carb cruise the sink was like here it was just a much smaller space so over here we have a little sofa which is super nice and um there is a table and you have lots of storage and like we said um in a, another video when we're talking about cruising and some cruise essentials we are going to load up these metal walls with the magnetic hooks that we bring and then that way you have even more space to hang things and dry things this is where the magic happens obviously. i was thinking that but i was behaving myself I know, you know I, I don't have any sense um and then here is the uh view of not the greatest view in the world but hey you know what this is not a view of this is not a view of the laundry that needs to be done at my house and there's there's no chores so i think it is a beautiful view right now so one thing that is interesting that we found out now on freedom of the seas is we have the refreshment package not the alcohol package just the refreshment package and I've got my cup, but they don't have Coca-Cola freestyle machines no. here on Liberty of the Sea. So what you do is you just take your cup to any one of the bars and they will fill it up. Now, if you have the refreshment package, they'll actually give you cans of soda if you want soda. But if you just have the soda package, they're just going to fill up your cup. But it was interesting. I didn't know about it. So yeah. it's, it's different as you get on the different ships because we were on Liberty of the Seas which is also a freedom class ship and that one had the coca-cola machine so it's it's nice seeing all the different things this one as well though only has a couple of plugs we'll show them to you so i'm really glad that we brought our adapter because this is it this is it this are all the plugins so we're gonna have to charge our phone with this and do my hair with this and obviously joe's hair with this um so that's it but we do have the adapter with the little cord on it so you can plug that in right there and then that will give you like four or five usb ports as well as like three outlets so really really important we'll leave a link for that down I'm below i'm gonna use it up this is just for you to have fun but it makes it more fun if you have somebody to hang out with like you already know that you know who you're gonna be eating with if you want to what are you eating i'm eating escargot because they sell them here <laughs> this is not something that you can just get I don't get normally unless you're going to a specialty like Italian restaurant or something I don't or French restaurant you don't usually see this you even get the fancy plate that I can't on. believe you're eating snails but you won't eat frog legs well I mean I'm, I'm not afraid of snails but I'm afraid of frogs it is Tuesday 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 Good morning, it is Tuesday, day two of our cruise, and I am headed up to the jogging track because we are going to be walking a 5K this morning. I believe it is 13 laps will get us our medal, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna meet up with everybody who's an early riser like me and willing to try to get the steps in beginning at 6.30 a.m. Oh no, it looks like the deck is closed due to weather, so we are going to have to pivot our plans a little bit. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you can even hear us because it's pretty windy this morning. Oh, there goes my hat. Thank you so much. Goodness me. So if we need to get our steps in, we gonna have to want it, right? Right. <laughs> so fortunately, I couldn't even see a way forward. I thought, uh-oh, it's closed. And then I saw Sarah, like one, one floor below, tapping on the window, like, come down first, and then we could go back up. Yep. So fortunately, we're still out here, but it's a little bit windy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> by the look of our hair, it wasn't gonna be the wind cooperating that got our steps in this morning. You just had to decide it. So Deb and Andy, what did you what did you think about walking this morning? Awesome. Awesome. My friendship is awesome. Yeah. Good morning. It is Tuesday morning. Uh, we are somewhere in the Caribbean. Today's a sea day. Uh, right now it is a little overcast, a little bit windy, but from looking at the weather report, it looks like the weather is supposed to get better. Uh, Rachel got up super early this morning 
went up to the walking track to join a bunch of people to do our 5K. We're having a 5K, uh, not a competition, just like do you wanna walk or run, uh, whatever you wanna do around uh, the running track up on top. And we printed up these cool little 5K medals that say 2KK Getaway 5K. Uh, I right now am going to head up to the Windjammer, have a little bit of breakfast and see who's up there and just sit down and have some good community. What are you doing? I'm just making sure that I'm still community ready. <laughs> um, we did do a 5K this morning, which was awesome. Just hanging out was awesome. Um, then we went to the Windjammer for breakfast and then we went upstairs to our meeting place to just kind of chat for several hours. It was so awesome, but I want to make sure they don't stink. I will shower again before we go to dinner tonight because it's supposed to be like dress your best tonight dinner, um, but I still don't want to stink for lunch. So while we were gone... <gasps> Yay! Yes, and this is one that I've never had before. It's a bear, right? I'm it looks like a walrus. I think it's a bear. Is, uh, I mean, I guess a walrus would be more of an ocean animal. I don't so, know. Yeah. It looks to me like a walrus. I see like tusks. That's oh, what. that's okay. Well, I like your interpretation of it. <laughs> yeah, yesterday um, when you were out walking around and talking to people, I actually talked to the cabin attendant. And he's like, anything I can do? And I'm like, Rachel likes towel animals. I love towel animals. So I'm loving this. I mean, this morning was great. And what we ended up doing, it was kind of like a last minute decision. I'm glad that Royal Caribbean was able to come through on this, but we, we entered into the 2KK getaway cruise. And if you look at the sign up form for the one in December, like right on the front, no keto police, no speakers, just community. <laughs> and so we didn't want to have this thing where like, okay, on sea days or, you know, whenever, like you're not going to enjoy your cruise. We, we wanted to be like, this is just about hanging out. So we never really had anything planned. And then it kind of occurred to us, like, what if we can find a place to hang out at? And so I contacted Royal Caribbean. I'm like, could you give me a meeting room? Just to, like, not like an official lecture or anything like that, but just a place for us to kind of all get together and say, we're all here. And it's been great. So yesterday we were at the Barbados room. Right. And we all just did introductions. And then today we finished up the introductions. Well, and that's the thing. So there's no speakers at right. this. And it's not a keto conference. It's a meetup. But I'm going to tell you, I have learned so much on this cruise from everybody sharing their story because they're sharing their story. Everybody has a very unique journey. When they People talk, asking for advice, like what did you do? People talking about what works, what doesn't, what were their thoughts. And I think that it's been really powerful for people to be like, hey, this is wh what I've been seeing on YouTube or this is a book that I've been reading. And I've been trying to make it work because I've seen somebody that I respect say this is the only way to do something something and being able to let that go yeah i think i think it was deb that got up this morning and said listen there's 50 different people here yeah and there's 50 different versions of keto represented in this room and that's okay yeah and we we have a very healthy room of people people who have overcome some amazing things and i love that we have taken a time time to just acknowledge it right. it was nice to hear everyone share their story and be able to celebrate in a space like this is what i did and have a room of people acknowledge it because sometimes it's not just that your doctor's not on board or a family member's not on board but they have not even acknowledged your success yeah and it wasn't like this strict kind of like tables atmosphere no. i mean it's just chairs like very very relaxed everyone just kind of lounging out yeah and i'm glad we decided to do it and we're definitely going to do it on the december one we're definitely going to this time we're going to reach out earlier and not get like the scraps left over in conference rooms but right I, i'm really grateful that royal caribbean came through the last second was able to find us some rooms and i think it really worked out and and i've already had people come up and be like we don't have any more, but we have now we just have two port days. Yeah. But we have dinner and then just, you know, everybody's just kind of sitting around. It's so nice to see people from all over the country, countries, because we have people from Canada here. Yeah. Um, 
sitting at the coffee shop, sitting at the pizza shop, sitting just out on deck, visiting. talking, visiting with each other, building community. That's what this is all about. Well, look at you. I got to wear my furs. My fake furs, of course. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. This is like dress up fancy night. And so we're heading to main dining and I'm just excited to get my food on. Well, it's 8.30, so of course we're at karaoke. So right now it's kids karaoke, but pretty soon it's gonna be the adults and I don't know what kind of shenanigans we're gonna get into. the crazy quest and this is like a group participation game where we are going to help supply a contestant what they need to be successful in this game and it's usually outrageous things so we'll see what the two crazy kiddos family can bring Our team has it. I'm so excited about this. I promise I don't think she has any idea what she's So the weather was not great today. We actually did not venture in to a perfect day at Coco K, but it was actually a perfect day for friendship because we just hung out in the hot tub. Uh, we went to the wind jammer this morning for breakfast and we've been just visiting all day long, which has been super fun. And now we're playing cards and I'm looking forward to playing a new game. We just got done with a very intense game of Skitbo and now we're gonna try to learn a new game. We are about to learn a brand new game called Hands and Foot. And it's a card game that Deb knows how to play and she's gonna teach us how to play it. We're up in the card game room on deck 10. 
mean, are we all alive? Um, we are. This is not like family game night. This is better than our family. This is fine. Well, I think you're like we're we're gonna oh, talk to each other by the end of this sense. game. So like it's been well, fun learning something new, and I appreciate Deb's patience because <laughs> I'm super <laughs> slow learner and I like great. I like and forget things a lot. So it's. This has been really neat learning a new game. And Joe's immediate response when he saw the light bulb over my head going like, no, we're not forcing this on the children when we get home. But I am looking forward to um, maybe like getting together with like Chris, Deb, Robin, because I understand they know how to play it more. So maybe we can play it, you know, just to get together. Maybe, maybe during the RV show. shows up. Oh, there you go. As requested. Oh, wait. What should we say is like a group? Uh, we won! We won! We just got done taking a group photo, uh, and then we got a second dip. And now we're in friendly. Okay, guys, we wanna post. Okay, the first answer is dance. Dance. What do you think, guys? Yes or no? No. Problem. Yes. This is hilarious because it's not like they start the music out and like give you some words and then you finish it. It's like you have to know all the words. And like that is the problem. We never know all the words to a song. We need some help. We need a crutch. I'm not big on are pulling into port. We have never seen this. We've never actually seen like a docking process. Usually we just wake up and we're here. So this is really neat. And thank you, Lord. There is calm waters and no rain yet. So I'm really praying that we can get out and people can enjoy Nassau this morning. So I'm looking, there's a couple of ships over here. It looks like that's a carnival ship. There's That's definitely a Royal Caribbean ship over there. Here is, uh, oh look, the pilot boat. So we didn't get to show you the towel animal that we got yesterday. Look at this, it is a rabbit in stride. Is what it looks like to me. But this was a really cool one. And I don't want you to miss it because it's super neat. So why did we not show that last night? Because we passed out in our bed last night. We went to two game shows. They weren't as fun as um, the ones we did earlier in this week. That the, It was hard to beat the perfect quest, though, or, or, or I can't remember what it was. The silliest quest, the perfect quest. Crazy something. quest. The crazy quest. Well, that's because we won. That one was flipping awesome. The ones we did last night was Friendly Feud and Finish the Lyric. And actually, Susan had a great idea for a future cruise, and that is... We could probably have our own little game show within a meeting room. So we're going to, that's an ambition that we have. For the next cruise, now that we know, because mm -hmm. again, we kind of threw this together at last minute, we're going to book meeting rooms like way in advance, right. maybe like four hours a day, you know, where we can just, just have, them. have games, like even in, in, in a late afternoon, like after dinner, instead of going to a Royal Caribbean game, maybe we want to have a 2KK game. Right. So, I mean, these or are... Or do it on a cruising day. These are two cruisers putting on a group cruise after only doing two cruises themselves personally. So, <laughs> we're learning things all the time. But I think that that is a great idea because I really enjoy game shows and I enjoy community. But, you know, what, what makes a game show fun, too, is the thought that you could be a contestant on it. And so when there's a great big group, it kind of, you know, limits it. So I, I'm excited. That That's an ambition that we have. But we got tired yesterday was, was the short of this long story that I'm going on with. So you didn't get to see my towel animal yesterday, but here he is. So since we're talking about it, you know, again, like you said, this is the first time we're organizing a 2KK cruise. It's only your third cruise ever. In life. <laughs> and um, when we're 
getting ready or organizing the one for December and future ones, let us know down in the comment section, what are some things that you would like to see on a community cruise? Remember, no speakers. Yeah, so. Just fun. No recommendations on that because yeah, no speakers. We're not doing speakers, but we also wanna provide opportunities where you can go off and do your own thing. And yeah. we don't want people to feel obligated like, oh my gosh, I didn't go do this. You've overscheduled me, Rachel. But we also want people to feel like I had fun. So it, we're, we've been trying to do that balance of, you can go do your own thing and we have a meeting room and, and a lot of the meeting rooms, especially because this is a smaller ship where there weren't as many meeting rooms, but is like four hours a day on sea days, is that good? Should we do more? Yeah. Like, would you rather do games at night or do you want to go do the cruise activities at night and then schedule games during the day? Let us know down in the comment section what would be a good way to do it. We can't promise we're going to do them all. No. But but I, I, I like the suggestions. We need ideas. Yeah, exactly. Have you taken the elevator at all on this trip? Yeah, we've taken it a little bit, but... Um, Most of the part, we've been doing stairs even when we're on like deck three and have to go to deck 12. I feel like my, my stride is like, there's bacon and eggs at the top of this. <laughs> so like, I'm a little bit more excited about doing it. Um, we're on our way up to the Windjammer for breakfast. I love the variety for breakfast is super awesome here. Lots of bacon. I will say that the line for bacon is probably the only line there is at the Windjammer because there's- And there's, the omelets. And the omelets. There's lots of different um, variety of foods, but I think a lot of people on vacation allow themselves to bacon. have bacon. So it's kind of cool that we get bacon all of the time. So Joe told me yesterday, I did not know about this with all of our World Caribbean trips, there is an Eggs Benedict station. Yes, there is. I actually almost got one yesterday, but I needed the room for the extra bacon and I did not have room for the Eggs Benedict. So all of the talk of the bacon, and I'm not having any bacon today, they have crispy pork sausage, which I love crispy pork sausage. And I've also found I really like the chicken sausage. I love the chicken sausage. I like the texture of it. Me too, and no apologies, because I know that that's like a sad thing. And do not give me a chicken hot dog, though. That's like, ugh, or yeah. turkey. Then I'm gonna have fried eggs, a little bit of ham. So I've got cream cheese. And now what I need to do is dig through my bag and see if I can find a chocolate element, a caramel element, a chocolate uh, salty. Like one of the chocolate things, because Somebody told me yesterday that you can take cream cheese. Donna Joe. And then put like chocolate electrolytes on it and it is delicious. So now I have to dig through the bag and see, do I possibly have one with me? I look forward to consuming now um, whipped cream and a brick of cream cheese a night with now with the, with the electrolytes on them. So we came back from breakfast and look at my little sloth hanging from the curtain here, this is by far- That's the best one I've the ever seen. The coolest one I've ever seen. So yeah, I'm gonna tickle his little tummy. Um, this is so cool. I really need to get into towel folding, Joe, because I wanna be able to, to do this. Look at even like, he looks like he's got a little toe and everything. I love this. I wanna be able to torture the children with this, Joe. There is some bad news on the bed. That means we got to go home tomorrow, which makes me sad. And it is like the butt crack of dawn that we're <laughs> getting off this boat. But I'm not gonna focus on the fact that this is the last night. I'm just going to enjoy the last night to the fullest and just cherish all these memories that we have made. All of these conversations have just been so precious to me. They are written on my heart. Like all of these interactions that we've been privileged to have on this cruise. And it makes me know that this was a good investment. This was a good investment of our time and our energy, not so, not just so that we could meet people, but that the people here on this cruise could meet one another. And I see friendships flourishing. I mean, between us and them, which is great, but also between one another. And I love seeing people become friends. I think that that is a beautiful thing and the smiles and the laughs and it allows us to go back to our life and into this year 2024 
I believe with a hope for good things that we're not just looking at the progress that we're making in our health journey. It's a good thing to be looking forward to that, but also looking with a hopeful attitude that, you know what, I am going to pursue more laughter during the day, more joy. We were talking this morning at breakfast about how nice it has been to be unreachable to negativity that I can't, I can't turn on the news even like I'm not, I'm not being able to get like news feeds. And as much as that is like, I'm not, you, you're not used to it. It's kind of nice to have a rest from anything that would be a demand of life, just to take a time out and enjoy yourself, relax, stop worrying for a minute. It's really going to help us take that next step into 2024 victoriously. So we are in Nassau and it is a parking lot for cruise ships right here. And it's kind of cool. So there is the freedom of the seas that we were just on, me and Joe. And then here is our boat right here, Liberty of the Sea yeah. ship. I'm sorry, I'm new to cruising and I call a boat, a, a ship a boat. Um, but we're really excited to kind of explore NASA and that bright sun is feeling so good. It's definitely the first time that we've seen it while we've been on board. So we are blessed to be here on this particular day. So this is apparently the end of the government's fiscal year. And so they're having a celebration that begins at their church. And so this church is um, just, a, 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 I guess, a center for the community. And so we may be able to see some celebration going on in the streets here of Nassau. So I'm really looking forward to, to seeing what's next. So the last time we were in Nassau, we actually went inside of this church. It Christ is Church is the Christ Church Cathedral. It has an amazing history. I'll actually link down below a website that tells its history because you go through like all of the governments and the different countries that at one time or another like were running the Bahamas. They kept trying to like burn it down and it kept coming back and <laughs> and the fact that like even all of the stones they're not concreted together no it keeps surviving storms and it just stands and when you go inside there's beautiful, beautiful. stained glass memorials of people as a matter of fact there is just one plaque that just it when you read it it just touches you so much so i'll put some of the pictures if I can find them from our last trip, because we took a lot of pictures inside. Hopefully I didn't delete them off of my phone yet. Uh, but it's just so gorgeous in there. And if you ever get a chance to come to Nassau, I would definitely come and check it out if you like yeah. visiting churches. It's not in a bad area. It's only like one block off of like all the main shopping stuff. But you can see there's a lot of people walking around here. We're, we're actually standing right next to the Pirates of Nassau Museum. So it's, it's not out in an area where you're afraid to venture. But if you just want to see the inside of it, a gorgeous old church and just take a moment, this is the place to come. So the story gets even cooler because this is also a marker of their new fiscal year and all of their new Supreme Court members will be sworn in. Um, they begin their day here. So this is going to be about an hour and a half, two hour um, parade and, and procession that's going on. So we're going to kind of wait around the area because hopefully people will have an opportunity to go in, you know, later. He inside. said about an hour. Yeah. So, but that's just kind of a neat thing to see like how their, their government switches out and, and we just happen to be here on a very historical day. So since we are waiting for the processions to start, we decided to go to the Pirates Museum just across the street and explore what it was like in 1716 because a lot of the history of that church has to do with, with what was going on in the world and a lot of merchants coming in, you know, pirates and also different explorers from France and England and all over the world coming to the Bahamas. So we'd like to learn a little bit more of the history. So this is one of the cool things about cruising is that you can go and do shore excursions through the cruise line and pay, you know, a hundred, 150, $200 on them, or you can just kind of explore cities on your own. So it costs us $14 a piece to come into this. So we walked here and it's costing us $28 instead of $250. Can you imagine being on a ship for just months, months and months and months. And we talk about like seasickness and like, you know, 
things to make you more comfortable on the ship. There is no ear patches. There is no like seasickness medicine. And you're on the boat for months, ship for months. So this may be where you got the term strength in numbers and certainly on the 2KK getaway cruise where we're finding there is strength in numbers, but um, maybe it began with kind of a negative purpose. Here, this boat right here is the Revenge, a captured French Corvette. It is 130 feet long with 16 guns and would have a pirate crew of 200. As a merchant vessel, you're gonna have a lot less people on the ship, probably about 35 crewmen on a regular merchant vessel. So the whole design was we're gonna have a ton of pirates on this ship and because there were more people on the ship, they could overtake merchant vessels more swiftly. So I think it's kind of interesting in the loft above me, that is where the pirate quartermaster would plan everything they need and organize everything for the next sailing. So would that make you, Joe, the pirate quartermaster? master because you would be prepping everything in your little loft or your office for the next 2KK cruise. Okay, so we have a true and false question. True or false, the typical pirate ship was a two-masted schooner with a black hull. What do you think, Joe? False. False is correct. Although some famous pirate captains commanded three-masted ships, the majority of pirates in the West Indies favored the fast single-masted sloop or gaff cutter. I was a total guess. I, I figured. So I find this interesting. They have a card here telling you about the diet at sea. Because, like, what, yeah, what did they eat when they were on board on this tiny little ship for months and months and months? It said food and drink on a pirate ship was dependent on the locality and what they would rob from captured ships. In the Caribbean, pirates ate turtles and the local fish. On long voyages, they carried on board chickens and live animals like cows and goats and pigs which were killed for the pot. A favorite dish was, I'm not even gonna pronounce it, a highly seasoned stew, which was made from anything available and might include chunks of meat and pickled herring, <laughs> hard boiled eggs, vegetables, liberal additions of wine, oil, vinegar, salt, and pepper. So in other words, it sounds to me like they were opportunistic eaters that focused on meat. So this is a very crude picture they've got going here, but probably very accurate and this is what do you do when someone gets sick surgery on board a pirate ship is going to be very primitive and because they didn't you know have a lot of resources usually the carpenter was in charge of cutting off an arm if needed or you know the surgeon was the carpenter of the ship and they would treat a lot of different sicknesses with things like mercury that wasn't doing any um, benefit to the poor patient on board and certainly a lot of people died of things like scurvy and um, different malaria diseases that they would encounter when they would go on land. That was really fascinating. That was really a lot of fun. Wealth the $14 a person. I totally agree. There's actually a display at the very end. I thought it was really cool. I don't know if you saw it, but it actually took two years to plan building this museum, another 10 months to actually build it. And many of the parts, like the ship and everything, they were built in different countries all over the world, mm. and then they were sent over here. But it, I mean, three years in the making for this museum, and, and there are some really interesting history. I in really appreciate the bringing that history forward, that it's not lost, and, and that with some hard work, people have brought it to light so that we can kind of understand uh, piracy and, and, and why it was so effective. And I think one of the, the probably the reasons why it was so effective is that kind of like, community it's so funny we can use our powers for good and not evil but the fact that you felt like you had a voice on the crew you had voting there were like you know some there was structure i i always had the opinion that it was just a bunch of people you know trying to kill each other every single night but it looks like they worked together and found that there was some strength in numbers <laughs>
Wow, that was amazing to be here and to, to see this. It was just such a beautiful thing to see. Uh, all the kids are out from school watching this and to just uh, see the humility and the leadership to, I think, to begin any new year acknowledging that you don't have all the answers and you need help. And I just think it was a really nice way to, to put your best foot forward into the new year. And it just, all of the, the, the beauty and the reverence of this morning, it was just, we felt very honored to be here on this very historic day for 2024 here in the Bahamas. Good morning. Are it's, you happy to see that or sad to see that? I'm, I'm sad to see that. I feel like the this entire week went by so fast. I'm excited to see my kids and and mom and you know be able to use the phone regularly <laughs> to call and check in. But um, but I'm gonna miss everybody because it's just been so nice to have people to eat breakfast with and to spend the day with and to chat with it's it's just been wonderful and I, i'm sad if i'm honest you want, that's what I want the to last breakfast with everybody together what are your thoughts let's just go around real quick if you guys don't mind let's go around real quick and just say like what is one takeaway that you had from this cruise and i Immediately, Sarah, I'm sorry you're to my right. We begin with you. Community. It's You meet people online, but you don't get to see them face to face. And this is the time where you can come together. You're spending five days or four days total. All five together. days, four nights. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to know somebody and you make new friendships. And that's what's awesome about it. I agree. I think, you know, even though we've been doing keto together, it can feel like an island. You know, we don't have community around us that eats this way, and so it's nice to be in a whole group that shares this way of eating um, and hear everyone's individual stories. It was just nice to meet people in this community. <laughs> My well is full of non-judgment and big love and I can eat what I want without somebody criticizing me. My battery is charged, my bill is full. Get yourself some people and call yourself. Go to some meetups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just um, thank you guys so much for creating this cruise. This has just been a phenomenal blessing to have been here and to be around people that are all like-minded. Just lots of friends, made a lot of friends this week. There's nothing like meeting other people that basically do what you do. Because whether you're, you're, you're doing it alone as a couple or individually as a singular person, it's just great to be able to hang out with other people that do the same thing. I gotta say, I am looking forward to the next cruise already or the next meetup or just the next interaction that we get to have with another, another human person. And we're really hoping to see interactions happening in response to this. Like we're gonna get off of this ship, but the friendships are not gonna stop. So I look forward to just seeing posts and comments of people interacting with each other that maybe they met here and we'll see them at a future you know, conference or a meetup where they like got a hotel room together or they're having lunch back home. That's our desire is to see that. And I believe it's gonna happen. I, I really saw some nice interactions. Once you have gone to a friendship level where you're beyond even talking about food and you're talking about now your knucklehead kids not taking out the trash or like we talked about purchasing a car and like the stresses of that or what's going on at work. Like We're capturing you in your pajamas this morning after you've rolled out of bed. That's exactly right. When they love you right where you're at like that, like then you know, you know, when we're eating breakfast and yeah, there's no makeup and it's like you didn't get a chance to fix your hair yet. It's like, you know, you're, you're safe. You're safe. You found some friends that are safe. That's a precious thing. We're home.
You still have your pirate's wristband on. I do. That was a great excursion, and this just may be a part of my life now. I highly recommend if you go to NASA, <laughs> whether on a cruise or something else, um, right behind the church, right next to, across the street from the church. Christ Church. And there's the Pirate Museum. And $14. $14 a piece to get in. Took uh, about an hour, hour and a half or so to walk through it. And if you if read you take everything. your time and read everything and, and and really enjoy yourself, I think it's one of the best excursions we've ever been on and certainly was not an expensive excursion. But we're nerdy. So if you're not somebody that's like, ooh, pirate lore, like then maybe it wouldn't be something you would enjoy. But for us, it was wonderful. Now... I want to lay down and watch. I want to start off with Saturday Night Fever because right. somebody has never seen Saturday I've Night Fever. I've never seen it. I mean, I've heard all the songs, obviously, like the Bee Gees, especially, right. were a big part of my growing up. But I've never seen the movie before. What did you think of the show? Because we, we, we said we were there and then we, we collapsed. We collapsed. It was awesome. Like, I will say, if you go on any cruise... And they offer something that they're kind of touting as a Broadway show. That would at least be the one thing that I would not miss. Like, I would arrange the schedule in in the evening or afternoon to make sure you get to that. Because that's really where they concentrate a lot of effort. And for us, it was one day only, the last day of the cruise. What a way to end a cruise. It was the perfect way. Because, well, when it ended with the um, we don't say goodbye. Yeah. I was like... (laughs) Because we're, like, sitting in, like, rows. We took two rows. Um, of everybody who went at that time. Some people went to the earlier yeah. showing. Um, but when you're surrounded by people that you don't want to say goodbye to, and they're singing the song, We Don't Say Goodbye. And that's really how I feel. When we were sitting at breakfast today and, you know, going with Terry from the airport, I was really think, thank you, Terry, <laughs> for needing a ride to the airport because and allowing us to take you because I don't think that I would have been able to get off the ship collected if I didn't feel like, okay, there's still one more conversation to get to have. You know, it was hard to like leave my friend. So having a friend to ride with us, I know Joe, you should, you're, you're my friend. Um, and I should be satisfied with that when I need to be, but, um, it, it was so nice to kind of continue the like disembark right. with, with a friend Um, but we don't say goodbye. We'll be able to, we're going to have a live stream tonight. Our friends who are still in town, or maybe they'll be back home by then. Uh, we'll still be connected together, but it will be up to us to steward this relationship between now and December. Mm -hmm. And what I would love if the people, and I think this is going to happen. I really saw some very close connections made that by the time we get to December, they're already going to have met up for coffee or lunch or maybe had like a family trip together or something like that. I think we're gonna see that, that that it's not gonna be January to December, nobody seeing one another. Like I think that there will be opportunities for people to connect throughout the year because we don't say goodbye. So we did that big round table, but I don't think we really addressed us. Like what, what was your biggest takeaway from like this 2KK getaway, the first one. That you can bless somebody's health journey, their keto journey, without ever talking about a morsel of food. Because I think that we all watch YouTube videos and you're listening to podcasts and you're, you know, reading journals of medicine and you're learning all of this very important things to get you on to the path of this way of eating. We get it, like this way of eating, this very doable, proper human diet is the way to eat, you know? But what makes you successful on keto is having somebody to walk alongside you, not feeling like you're isolated. When we were at the Pirate Museum and they were sharing that one of the gravest tortures that a pirate captain could inflict on the crew was they put you on in isolation. They put you on an island. They left you someplace by yourself and said, the punishment is you be governor of your own territory. And that is the gravest punishment that someone could inflict. And I think that for a long time, we Mm self-inflicted 
mm-hmm. that punishment. We we thought that while we're trying to get to our health results, that we would just do it in isolation, and then we'll come out, uh, you know, of our isolation when we are victorious. But we're finding that that it does not work that way. Yeah. For me, I'm like in shock, awe, amazement. And when God put on my heart, like last September, like we should do a community cruise. We tout community. And and I felt like God saying like, you need to do a community cruise. And I went to Rachel and said like, hey, I want to do this. And she's like, are you sure? Well, because- I'm like, that's you, done. Well, you, but you were like, Joe, you're an introvert. Like, you're an introvert. Mm-hmm. Like, can can are are you going to be able to sit around a table with a bunch of people and enjoy yourself and not feel like pressured? And I didn't know how much I needed this cruise. Mm-hmm. And like, I went in going, okay, like I'm going to try to step out of my comfort zone because like I I can do a lot of things behind the scenes and I talk all the time. It's like if you approach me, I can talk. But I have a very hard time approaching other people. And to go in and I felt like I knew everybody and I didn't. Mm-hmm. There, there were only a, a handful of people Did who we've ever, ever met before? in person at different conferences. And I felt like this was a family. And I looked forward to like getting up. And going to breakfast and sitting at a table with 10, 12, 15 people, I looked forward to seeing everybody at dinner. Sitting in the hot tub. Sitting in the hot tub, walking around, playing games, going to the shows. I mean, it was, I didn't know how much I needed this. I mean, we grew up. And we've shared this a lot about how we had that lunch table experience where there was no room at the table for you. And here on the cruise, everybody was saving you a seat. There was a lot of saving a seat. Or let me move over. It's like, hey, we're all cramped, but you, let we'll, we'll scoot. We'll get more cramped. And I'm thankful for the opportunity looking forward because we were like, okay, well, if we don't, you know, if if this doesn't go off well, if like maybe, you know. It's a one and done. It's a one and done. We were going to be satisfied with that, but we really feel like this is something that we're committed to now and that we really want to do. And we've got one prepared for December. And that's my, my thought is for those that need this, like we did, there's a seat saved for you, which I think is is precious if you're somebody like us that there was never room for you at the lunch table and it doesn't matter like where you are in life what your interests are that's that was the cool thing we found that there were a lot of people that just had shared interests maybe they had kids in the same season of I'm life. building a plane <laughs> <laughs> there were there were people that had similar hobbies we even you know got into the card room and realized that while we were new to cart certain card games there were some people that were like oh yeah i remember playing that and were able to um remember a card game and start playing it again that they that they hadn't played in a long time because maybe they hadn't been around somebody who also knew how to play it so it just it was awesome to be like to step off the boat you're in nassau we even had Nancy used to live in Nassau. So it was like, we even had like somebody in our group that could tell you some points of interest to look for when you were walking in port. I thought that was cool. Then to bump into people you knew, and here we are, you know, in the Bahamas and you would go into a shop and just become part of a little group that's, you know, looking for souvenirs. I I just thought that was so fun. So I... I didn't know how much I needed this and I'm coming away and I don't want to say, okay, it's the greatest thing ever because I don't want to take away from other experiences because I've taken something amazing away from every experience. And I think every experience, every conference, every meetup, every cruise we've taken has helped me to come out of my shell more. Right. To, to, To know that there are people who love me, who care about me, who want to support me. 
But it was great because we went onto this cruise with all of these plans. We're going to film this and we're going to film that and we're going to show all of our food and we're going to interview everybody. And it just evolved that, you know what, this isn't about food. It's not about food. And that's why there's no food in this video. I mean, it might be one or two little tiny clips, but we didn't do a what we're eating every because it wasn't about that. It was about community. It was about the fact that, you know what? whether you're gonna stay keto on the cruise or you're gonna go off of keto or you're gonna maybe dabble in and have a couple of little treats to, that nobody was judging you, nobody was, there was no keto police. No. And it was about community and getting to know each other and sharing experiences and connecting with each other. And that's why like we started the beginning like kind of filming people's stories. And then I'm like, it's, it's not about that either. It's, it's about that with the people who were here. Well, and that's the thing, yeah. There were all, everyone had an opportunity to share their story and let me tell you, it's powerful. The, it was definitely a challenge for, for me and Joe to say like, hey, we're gonna continue spreading the word about keto and get it in front of as many people as humanly possible. And we pray that you will help us make that possible by by subscribing to the channel, by sharing um, our videos with people, by sharing a recipe, like, you don't know the, the impact it can make. Maybe, maybe you know, the person that you have in mind that needs it, like, share, share in some way. Let's keep spreading this because we saw people, it's certainly not just for weight loss. We, there's a lot of health concerns that keto has spoken into and really helped, um, but, in that moment of everybody sharing stories when we were in a group it felt like a sacred place that needed to stay safe within the walls of where it was being shared and and as much as we love the opportunity to share people's stories it felt like this is just for our little group right now Mm -hmm. This is for our little group. And I do think that there were people that are in that group that are going to feel empowered to to share their story, you know, in a bigger way. But we're going to let them decide when and where that takes place. There was also a confirmation for me. And I actually I I knew it, but I forgot about this. I kind of put it off in the back of my mind. And that is the fact that. We have another channel, if you didn't know. We, we, our channel is Two Crazy Campers. I will leave a link over Rachel's head. And we started that channel in 2020 after we got an RV. And, we, and it's honestly when we started talking about getting off of the couch that we've got all of this energy and that's the intro to that what channel. What do we do with it? Is that we've lost all this weight and we discover we have so much more energy for activities. And we started camping. And we started going, okay, what if we could merge these two worlds? What if we could go to people who are RVers and campers who many times are sedentary Mm -hmm. and and just like we saw so many people sitting in an RV but never leaving their campground, never exploring this amazing park that they were in. What if we could show them how they can get healthy? And then what if we can show people who are getting healthy, and what I mean healthy, I'm not just talking about losing weight, I'm talking about- Yeah, more mobility, what are you gonna back do with mobility, it? Right? Bring back energy. Show them like there's something that we can do with it, whether it be going camping or kayaking or hiking or whatever it may be. And so we were trying to, can we merge these two worlds? And maybe we can have crossover. And then we have Richard. Yes, I love Richard so much. <laughs> and I don't cry a lot, but, but Richard reminded me that he found us because we went to Harbor Freight and did a video on what can you get for your RV at Harbor Freight. Which we need to link that video. Right? Because it, that that is the now. We did it in the middle of an air show. So there's like planes flying over us. That, and it was, I think it was from 2020 or 2021. Was, I, I, I think it was 2020. So I, I think I'm wearing like masks and everything back then. But what it is, is that that is a very precious video to me now. That was worth starting a whole channel if we could get to have Richard as a friend. So yeah, you don't know 
like what is going to open somebody's mind up to the possibility of like giving this way of eating a try? Yeah. So we have already scheduled, and in fact, I scheduled it. This is this is how worried I was mm -hmm. is that I created a group cruise for December. So we're gonna have a second 2KK getaway in 2024. Now I cannot promise we're gonna do two a year moving forward. But, but it's for this year. We did this one with very little notice. Like announced it in September, final payment was due 30 days later. It wasn't a lot of notice for people. No, like that's no notice. So now we've got a year's notice, right? We've got a year's notice. And so I, I, I arranged the entire group with Royal Caribbean. The dates are December 8th to December 14th. Um, unfortunately, those were the only time I would have liked to have done it, like mid to late October, November. Mm -hmm. um, the only other day possible would have eliminated um, 11 on 11, which we do not want to we be veterans or too important to us. So we chose this date. And a couple people had submitted registration forms as soon as we announced it. But I kept questioning myself going, what if this doesn't work? So I refused to register anybody until I got home because I'm like, I can always cancel it. Right. Right. But we're going to do it. But we've made a pledge to the people that were on there. And we're going to tell you the pledge that we made is that number one, no matter what, there will never be speakers. Like no. now there may be people who want to come. Yeah, Dr. Bear just needs a break and wants who, to hang out with a Who also friends. need community. Yeah. But we will never bring on speakers and say, we're gonna have a lecture because this is about community. It's about community. If you wanna see speakers, there are other things. Yeah. There is, you know, things like Hack Your Health. There is Keto, uh, some Keto Orlando Summit. There is Keto Palooza. There is a low carb There cruise, is a low carb which cruise. Which we will be on. Which we will be on. And we are emceeing. Yeah. 2024 and, and 2025. And it's flipping awesome. So right. it is a cruise with speakers. So we do not need to have right. a cruise with so speakers. We're not trying to be the low carb cruise. We're not trying to compete with them. We're not trying to be the next. This is, this is a community cruise. If you want to hang out with not just us, but with everybody. We are not the Great. coolest people in we, the group. We're certainly not the coolest people in our group. Um, then come, play games. We'll have a room where people can meet and hang out with and, and we'll share stories and things like that, but there'll be no official, and it's, those are optional as well. So that's number one, there will never be speakers. There will not be speakers in December. Um, the other thing that we have pledged to everybody and to ourselves is, it is limited to 100 cruisers. That we had 52 cruisers here. I felt it was good, but I think that I think that a slightly a little bit bigger will be okay and still be not manageable for us, but manageable for each other. It right. will still feel like a tight knit group. That's our desire. And so we're allowed to book 50, whole 50 cabins. So one of those is ours. So sorry, but we have to sleep somewhere. So that means 98 people, and, and that plus us. And that is it, it is limited. If it sells out, we can't bring anybody else yeah. because, we, because we want it to be what this was. Right, I mean, I can only wear so many articles of clothing to save seats for when it's like <laughs> time for the show, right? Like you should have seen me, I was like, you know, you have like a bag here and here's my jacket and here's a pair of socks and like you're trying to say, but yeah, no, we want it to feel intimate and there are so many other op opportunities for like where you know we can have as many people at a conference as, as you want you know like there's lots of room and certainly we've shown in the in last year 2023 for for me helped to prove that we could make conferences be a place where people felt connected not just a keto palooza and keto orlando summit which was like geared that way in mind but you know, you could go to Hack Your Health and find community if you were intentional, intentional about finding it. So a great big conference, you can still have a fabulous time getting to hang out with people and building community. But we were like, we want to just focus on community yeah. in this. So that's why we're gonna keep it small. And we've got some great ideas, thanks to Susan. Yes. We're gonna take some of the game shows that the cruise line puts on 
And we're going to do them to ourselves in right. our room where it can be like community family feud. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Help well, us, please. Well, it was funny because they <laughs> called it friendly feud. And so maybe we should keep it because, you know, the family feud, you, imagine, you know, sometimes when the, the parents and the kids play a board game, it really can be family feud. So, but we're going to have a, a great yeah. time. So we're, we're super excited about that, but we're going to we're going to lock it in at that. But I also want to say if you've got family members and you mm. want to bring them and they're not keto, they're welcome. They, they don't have to participate in anything that we're doing and hanging out. And if we're no. going to share stories and they want to, they, they, I want them to feel comfortable that, hey, I'm going to sit at a table with a bunch of keto people and I'm still going to eat my breaded chicken breast and I'm still going to eat the bread. And that is why right. I did not ask the head waiter to please don't put bread on our table. No, because we if that's what people wanted and it was there. That can be part of your decision making too if you're like, "Hey, I want to be part of, you know, one of these 98 people, but I'm not in a position where I think that I could have bread on my table and be okay with it." Well, then that's how you know that that this is not for you. Right. But if you're somebody that's like, "Hey, I'd like to bring maybe a, my partner or a kid that's not keto, Will they feel comfortable? Don't take our word for it. Ask some of the people that are, you know, were on the cruise, if you're in our Mighty Networks, and say like, hey, did anybody bring a spouse, a kid that was not keto? How'd they feel? Were they comfortable? And they'll, and, they'll be honest of, you know, how they felt. And to protect them, mm -hmm. I will say, without naming their names, there were people who brought family members yeah. who were not keto, right. who left going, maybe I should look into this. Right, which was nice. To me, I, I thought that the, the the great testimony of it was they're prepared to book for December. Yes. Which I think that, that I think says more about it, that they obviously had a decent enough experience. God bless you, Caleb, it sneezed in the other room, you may have heard. Um, but uh, they had a decent enough experience that they're like, okay, that wasn't that wasn't painful. I'm willing to come back. Like, I had enough fun that, like, let's do it again. And back to the bread thing, just to let you know, there were tables where everybody basically said, we don't want it, and told the waiter, and then he never brought it back. Yeah. So it, it, it just comes down to we want it to be a safe space for everybody. Everybody. Whether they're keto or not, this is about community. And I know that some people came wanting to, like, I'm going to protect my loved one from the cult. Yeah. And they left going... These people care. Yeah, well, what Joe's basically indicating is, you know, some people come with their loved ones to keto events because they're like, I just want to vet the people that you're hanging out with, yeah. keto loved one, because, like, I'm not sure. Like, Joe and Rachel could be, you know, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, right? Like, we could be crazy. You don't know. Like, are they going to, you know, like, pass around, like, some weird thing that you're supposed to commit to? So... It's not until you come and vet us personally that you, that you not know just that us, but everybody, everybody that you just know that like no, we're not some. I mean, we're crazy, and it is in the title, but like we're crazy for other reasons, not because we're you know trying to to hurt anybody or like sell anything to anybody. So that's what was nice, and we had some of those loved ones come back and say like, wow, I you know like I feel like my loved one you know is is safe when they are watching you, which I think is, is a really big, you know, testimony that, that blesses us. So we had a blast. Can't wait to do it again. But yeah. honestly, there's a lot going on between now and December. There is. Right. But I think that knowing, like I've had this beautiful time at the very first part of January and it's giving me courage for the rest of the year. Yeah. It's full, filled up my gas tank as Deb would say. And um, my well is full and I'm, prepared to go into the rest of 2024 though the schedule is is packed and varied it's 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 front loaded yeah it's front loaded through mid march right end of march but actually. i know that i know that we will survive it and you know why i know that it's not just because like oh we've got our diet on point so i know like we're gonna be in a better space i know we got people rooting for us yeah. friends rooting for us not fans not fans. You know, I think sometimes people come into YouTube and they're hoping to get some fans. <laughs> Help, like it was a good thing. Joe and I never imagined that, right? We were just wanting to share our story. We but never had friends. We, no, I mean, we, we didn't come into this hoping for fans. But we were surprised to discover that we could do more than just help people. We would find 
friends, the friendships that we needed in our life? Well, I want to get to my third most missed thing when we're gone. Okay. So number one is my children. I'm glad that's number one. Number two is Tabitha. Okay. But number three, this is a very important one after you've been on a cruise for five days. I need to get to my bidet. <laughs> Where's so, the boat? I want to get back on the ship. If you like seeing videos like this, you'll, hey, I, I know you feel this way as well. I don't say it. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos. We have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video that I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell button. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to Until it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.